the upset with some last second heroics. Today the hero was redshirt junior Clay Custer. Henry, walk me through that final shot. So there's just over 10 seconds left. Loyola had the ball out of bounds right around midcourt. They throw the ball to Custer in Tennessee's backcourt. Custer dribbles up to the top of the arc and then he, he makes the move that Ben Richardson called his uh, one-two pull-up jumper. So he takes two dribbles, pulls up from right around the elbow. Uh, Richardson said he hits it about 98% of the time, and today he hit it, but it hit the front of the rim and then bounced up, bounced in. So uh, Custer said he had some help from the basketball gods for the shot going in. Well, it was definitely an exciting last minute, but we have 39 other minutes we also need to catch you up on. Nick, can you walk me through Loyola's first half? Yeah, so Loyola struggled a little bit early in the first half. Uh, they were a little sluggish, let Tennessee get a lot of shots. So Porter Moser called a timeout, and he told me in that timeout, he woke his players up, I think is how he put it. He just got them, their minds were right, and they stepped up after that. They took a lead into halftime. They shot 47.8% from the field. Andre Jackson had 10 points early on, the hometown kid. So first few minutes were a little nerve-wracking for Rambler fans, but the last 15 minutes leading into the break were pretty good, I'd say. And what about for Tennessee? What was their first half like? Tennessee opened up the game incredibly hot. They went, they built a 15 to six lead. Admiral Schofield scored 11 points in the first five minutes. He was unbelievable. It seemed like he couldn't miss. And then Porter Moser called that timeout and something changed and Loyola started hitting shots. Tennessee stopped hitting shots. They started forcing things. They started rushing and really making mistakes, which Tennessee has a lot of underclassmen. Their team is mostly freshmen and sophomores. So really just kind of rookie mistakes. And now walk me through the second half of Loyola. They did enter the lead. How have they performed so far this season when they go into that second half of the lead? So the second half has been very friendly for Loyola. They came into this one 20-0 and when leading at halftime, and they're now 21-0 when leading at halftime. Uh, they played decent in the second half. There were, a little, there were a couple times where it looked like Tennessee was going to jump out in front, but the Ramblers held them off. Uh, a few key players, one, I know I sound like a broken record, I keep bringing them up, Lucas Williamson is going to be something one day. I mean, he, Loyola was up 40-39, to 39, Tennessee had just cut it to one point. Williamson hit a three, and it wasn't a play you see a freshman make. I mean, it was a big three, it put Loyola up four, and after that, Loyola got rolling a little bit more. Uh, another key player is another freshman, Cam Crooklyn. Uh, he's been key all year, and they called the NCAA tournament the big dance. Crooklyn was dancing out there. I mean, his footwork is so amazing, given his size. And he was just impressive all around down low. And obviously, probably the player that's going to stand out the most is Clayton Custer because he hit that jumper to seal the victory in three and a half to go. I would definitely add in Andre Jackson for a key player. He um, had 16 points, which was the game high, and he is from Texas, our little hometown boy. Now, can you walk me through Tennessee's second half of what went right, what went wrong, key players, anybody missing? So, Tennessee put up a fight. They tried to come back, uh, but they just couldn't. Hit the shots that they needed to hit. Um, Tennessee was missing Kyle Alexander, who's really their big man down in the post. He's six foot eleven, and he's their rim protector. He is the heart of their defense. And without him, Jackson and Crutt were, were able to really feast down low in the post. Um, and then Tennessee, they're one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. Today, they only shot six free throws. So that shows they weren't being aggressive enough. They weren't driving enough. And Loyal was doing a great job defending them. And Loyola ended up with 16 free throws, so there was a disparity there, but Tennessee just didn't have enough. Now Loyola was the 11th seed going into Tennessee's three, third seed. Um, and a lot of media didn't actually expect that this was going to be the outcome of the game. As student reporters, we're not experts, we're still learning, so we asked some members of the media what they think about Loyola and the game against Tennessee. I think that this tournament has been a, a two-week commercial for Loyola basketball, and it's uh, exposed and revealed the best about college sports. You know, mid-majors get to this level, much like Butler, much like Wichita State. Really, that game the other day, I mean, I think that's the kind of game that helps put the program back on the map. Not many people know they won a national championship in 1963, much less that they've tied a program record with 29 wins or won the Missouri Valley Conference, for that matter. But that was the kind of game, I think, that puts a program on the map, not just for basketball, but maybe even prospective students. I think it's. I think both teams are pretty good. I don't think this is a case where uh, you know Tennessee's talent level overwhelms Loyola at all. I don't think it should be a fun game to see. I guess it. Let's ride. Let's let it ride.
Loyola 62, Tennessee 59. So it seemed like there were some mixed reactions from all the members of the media. I guess we'll have to wait and see what actually happens in the game and if Loyola can get the upset over Tennessee. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Henry Redman. Well, in the end, the final score was actually 63-62 for Loyola. Now, what is next for this team? So Loyola's heading to the Sweet 16. They're going to play the winner of Cincinnati and Nevada. Cincinnati is the higher seed, so Loyola will likely be playing the Bearcats, but you never know. Since those two teams play Sunday, tomorrow um, at 5, 10 p.m., and then the two winners will uh, head to Atlanta for the Sweet 16 on Thursday, March 22nd. We'll see what happens then. Well, we do have to wait for that game on Thursday, but what's going on right now on Loyola's campus? What's the reaction like? Have you seen or heard anything? It's been incredible seeing the amount of support this team is getting. After all those years of Porter Moser sitting in the press conferences saying, come out to our games, you make a difference, all those cliches, it's finally paying off. The Damon Student Center had the most people I've ever seen in there. Granted, I've only been here two years, but it was packed. Bulldog Ale House was packed. Ireland was packed. Everywhere that had a watch party was packed and crowded. Watching this game, they all went crazy when Custer hit the jumper just as they did when Dante Ingram hit the jumper against Miami. So seeing the student body rally around this team is very amazing. And if I'm Moser, I'm seeing it as rewarding, seeing as though they've won 30 games, a program fest. And I know I talked to a couple of the guys in the locker room. They're ready to get back to campus and celebrate with everybody. And they'll just head right to Atlanta from there. Well, it's certainly an exciting time to be a Rambler. But that is it for our round two coverage. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Haley Spiller.